السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه Praise be to Allah, we praise him and we seek his help and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and the consequences of our evil deeds. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever he leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is no deity, no object worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with no partner or associate. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. I am confident that each and every one of us is taking advantage of this time and opportunity to start increasing in our worship of Allah with goodness and seeking the forgiveness of Allah as the blessed month of Ramadan approaches very quickly. And today I want to discuss our deeds, forwarding and rewinding, or forwarding and forgiving. Living our life can be compared to like a video. You record, you play, you forward, and you rewind. I've discussed many times in the past examples of call centers and how those people, the employees that work at a call center or telemarketing place, their calls are often recorded. Or you can also relate to any retail store or many other environments now where you see cameras recording us. The management that is recording the calls of these people that are doing the telemarketing, their objective is to monitor the employees, not to get them in trouble. That's not the point. The point is to help them. To help them by remembering to stay alert, to stay on their toes and perform their jobs as expected, not to get lazy. And also to help improve them where they need improvement by identifying those weaknesses. And subhanAllah, if we think about it, it seems that so much of our lives are designed in a similar fashion. Before I continue, though, I do want to ex ex say that we use examples and analogies from this dunya, like from our working life or from school life or just life in general, to relate to, to this. We cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot see the akhirah. We cannot see our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as a result of not seeing, sometimes it becomes difficult for us to stay focused. But most of us, we work every day or we go to school every day. And if we can instill in our minds and we can draw a parallel, we can draw a relationship on how the workings of life is very similar to what Allah expects of us, then inshallah, it makes it easy for us to remember and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he has commanded us to. So at the call center, all of your calls are recorded. And in life, we know that we have the angels recording all of our actions, no technology required. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah 36, ayat number 12, what could, what could mean. And we record that which they send before and that which they leave behind. And of all things, we have taken account in a clear book of evidence. 
most of us here will use email at least daily, if not hourly, or even perhaps more frequently than that. And just as how when you hit send on an email, you can't get it back. And I know there is an undo feature in some of the newer platforms, but it only lasts for a few seconds. So once the email is gone, there's no way to bring it back. And similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that which they send before, our actions are sent forward. So we need to pay very close attention to every action that we do, every word that we say. Because just as how before sending an email, double checking the spelling, double checking the grammar, reviewing it to make sure that the wrong emotion is not perceived by the reader, the recipient of the email. Similarly, we should be reviewing our before we speak. And it is sometimes it is critical for us to slow down our lives in terms of thinking of things before. And inshallah, you will find that it will lead to a much more peaceful, calm and relaxing life. And just as how the recorded calls at the call center are reviewed and judged for performance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of our ultimate judgment in Surah 69, ayat number 18, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what could mean you will then be presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for judgment and none of your secrets will stay hidden. And so we need to think about this very carefully. Just as how we are caught on security cameras or our calls are recorded in this dunya, so too, and even more so, is every moment of our lives captured by the angels. And we need to make sure that we are just as, if not much more careful in every moment of our lives because we know that the angels are with us and they are recording everything. And be sure that even if the angels did not record, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all knowing And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in Surah 17, Ayat 71, what could mean all together, all human beings with their respective imams, those who are given their record in their right hand will read it with pleasure and they will not be dealt with unjustly in the least. And this, this is the glad tidings for the believers. This is the glad tiding to those who worship Allah. This is the glad tiding to those people who took care in their actions, took care in their speech, took care in their worship of Allah alone. And to make sure that their worship of Allah was following the authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And just as we understand that the goal of job reviews or mystery shoppers or recording calls or watching on a video camera, it is to keep reminding those people that are being recorded to stay on their toes, to, 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 to perform their jobs as expected, and also to help improve them where they need improvement by identifying their weaknesses. Similarly, the reminders of the Qur'an, the reminders in the ahadith of the Prophet wasallam, the reminders that you hear from the khatib in Salatul Jum'ah, and especially perhaps the reminders in Ramadan, they are here to help us. It is to remind us to remember Allah, to stay on our toes and perform our job our duty of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as expected, but also to help us improve where we need improvement by identifying the weaknesses that we have in our worship of Allah. We spoke about this in a previous session, and that is the objective of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 183, what could mean, O oh, you who believe fasting is prescribed upon you as it was prescribed to those before you. So that you may become al muttaqun That's the point. That's the whole focus of fasting in Ramadan. But what is al muttaqun It is pious and righteous people who fear Allah by abstaining from all kinds of sins and evil deeds, which Allah has forbidden. And they love Allah by performing all kinds of good deeds, which Allah has, has ordained for us. And al muttaqun has two major qualities. One of self-restraint, so meaning to avoid sins, and one of action, in particular doing good deeds. And so when we compare this to the cameras 
that are recording us in life in various scenarios, whether it is a store or as business, even perhaps in our homes. What do those cameras encourage us to do? Primarily, it's self-restraint. The cameras, you will find they work on all of us or many of us. For example, when you're in a store, you don't steal. The question we need to ask ourselves is, is our fasting in Ramadan working on us? Think back to all of the years of life that you have had where you have fasted. And for some of us, it may be only a few years. For others, this may be your first year. And for others yet, perhaps you have already fasted for 40, 50, 60 years of your life. Have you noticed any changes, any improvement in your life now that Ramadan is approaching quickly? This is the time for us to take this assessment of ourselves and how we performed in the previous Ramadan. Did we find that our Iman is increasing? Or even now, as the month is approaching very quickly, do we feel this excitement? This excitement of these opportunities that Allah is giving to us in the month of Ramadan? Do we find that we are a stronger Muslim today than we were before the last month of Ramadan? So when we look at this now, I said that we can compare our lives to like a video. A video, we discussed the record function because the angels record our actions. We discussed the forward function of a video because our actions are sent forward. We discussed the playing of our lives when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give account for all of our deeds, all of our deeds essentially being played back. What we need to discuss now is the rewind function. So we have discussed the objective of Ramadan. It is to develop taqwa. It is to develop taqwa. But we also know that one of the goals that we should have in Ramadan is to gain the forgiveness of Allah. We explained in the hadith in the previous session, as it comes reported by Kaab ibn Ujra radiallahu an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, come near to the mimbar. Come near to the mimbar. And when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam climbed on the first step of the mimbar, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ameen. And then the second step, and he said, Ameen. And then the third step, and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ameen. And then when he finally came down, the Sahaba radiallahu an, they said, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have heard from you something today which we have never heard before. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained and said, when I climbed the first step, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam appeared before me and he said, destruction to him who found the best blessed month of Ramadan and let it pass by without gaining forgiveness. And upon that, I said, Ameen. And this is the disaster we need to make sure that we are not brought in, in bringing upon ourselves. This curse or this dua is being made by Jibreel alayhi salam in the masjid because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is ascending the mimba and the best human to ever exist is saying ameen destruction to him who found the blessed month of Ramadan and let it pass by without gaining the forgiveness of Allah Found the blessed month of Ramadan means that you lived in the month of Ramadan. You had life and you experienced this month. And so from this, we understand that the forgiveness from Allah, even during the month of Ramadan, it is not automatically attained. We need to work for it. And in Ramadan, we not only have to work for it and seek it, but we have to attain it. Otherwise, this dua of destruction by Jibreel salam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, could fall upon us. And we discuss some of the aspects of seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As an example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan out of faith and in hope of reward, his previous sins are forgiven. This is in Bukhari and Muslim and another hadith from Abu Huraira radiallahu an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever spends the nights of Ramadan in prayer, out of faith and in hope of reward, his previous sins will be forgiven. And we also know that we should be seeking forgiveness from Allah at all times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact commands us 
commands the believers to repent where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Nur, Surah 24, Ayat number 31, what could mean, and turn to Allah in repentance, all of you, O believers, that you may succeed. In Surah Al-Hujurat, Surah 49, Ayat number 11, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what could mean, and whoever does not repent, then such are indeed zalimun, the wrongdoers. In uh, Surah Al-Tahreem, Surah 66, ayat number 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what could mean, O you who believe, turn to Allah with a sincere repentance. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Hud, Surah number 11, ayat number 3, what could mean, seek the forgiveness of your Lord and turn to Him in repentance. So we know that we need to ask Allah for forgiveness. What does this have to do with the rewind function that I was mentioning? Let us think about some more ayat and a hadith, starting with the Sahih Hadith Qudsi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever knows that I am able to forgive all sins, I shall forgive him. And I shall not mind so long as he does not associate anything with me. Then, then we find the hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, the one who repents from his sin is like the one who did not sin in the first place. Subhanallah. And the matter of rewinding is even greater than this. So the one who repents from his sin, you did the sin, but is like the one who did not sin in the first place. So it's like you were able to rewind the video, rewind your life, to go back in time and erase this deed as though it has not happened. But the matter of rewinding is so much greater than this. Think about this. Think about these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Furqan, Surah number 25, Ayat 68 to 70. And if you don't remember anything, then this is the one. This is the ayah or these are the ayat to remember inshallah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what could mean. And those who invoke not any other God along with Allah, meaning you do not commit shirk, nor kill such a life that Allah has forbidden. You do not commit murder, except for just cause. And that is where the Sharia permits it, in an Islamic ruled land. Nor commits adultery, fornication. And whoever does this, meaning whoever does any of these three, then this, this shall receive the punishment. The torment shall be doubled to him on the day of resurrection, and he will abide therein in disgrace. Except, this is it, except for those who repent and believe and do righteous good deeds. For those, Allah will change their sins into good deeds. And Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Subhanallah. Think about these words. Think about that phrase. Allah will change their sins into good deeds. Not only when you perform tawbah, when you have a sincere repentance, when not only will Allah make it as though you haven't committed those sins, Allah will change those sins into good deeds. This should explain to us the immense grace and favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars, they define this change, the changing of the sins into good deeds of two types. Changing the bad characteristic into good ones. So shirk, if somebody has in their life and they repent from it, it is changed into true faith, to true iman, sincere iman. Somebody who's committing fornication and repents, then it is transferred into chastity. Somebody who's Lies is transferred, is, is converted into truthfulness and treachery into trustworthiness and so on. Changing the evil deeds that one has committed into good deeds on the day of resurrection. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah will change their sins into good deeds. It does not say that one bad deed will be exchanged for one good deed of equal weight. It could be less, it could be the same or it could be more in number or in weight. And it will depend on our sincerity, our sincerity of our repentance. Can you imagine any favor greater than this? And we know that life starts as a baby and then we grow to reach our peak and then we grow old. 
if Allah gives us life, people will say, and we see this of people, that we start to become like a child again in many aspects. And then we pass away, we die. The same as before our life started. Our life will rewind to the beginning. We need to take this time and opportunity in Ramadan to rewind our life, to rewind our sins by seeking and gaining the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having all of our evil, sinful deeds changed into good deeds, inshaAllah. And this is the month to peak our performance in goodness and righteous deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Sajda, Surah 32, Ayat number 12, what could mean. If only you could see the wicked hanging their heads in shame before their Lord, crying, Our Lord, we have now seen and heard. So send us back and we will do good. We truly have sure faith now. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is on the Day of Judgment. When they stand there, hanging their heads in shame, but it's too late. Seeing is believing. Absolutely, we truly have faith now. Of course you do, because seeing is believing. The test in this dunya is to believe in Allah without seeing Allah, but to believe in Jannah and the Nar without seeing the, the paradise and the hellfire, to believe in the angels without seeing the angels, to believe in the prophets and the books and everything that Allah has commanded us to believe in that we can't see, to believe in them without seeing them. Blindly? No. Absolutely not blindly. Because every single thing that surrounds us, including ourself and perhaps especially ourselves as a human, is an ayah from Allah, is a sign from Allah. And for us to reflect and ponder and think about and understand that this all was created by Allah will help us to understand. And so the last point that I want to end with is that we need to do as much as we can as soon as we can while we have the ability to do so. I'm sure that we are all looking forward to Ramadan. And for some of us, perhaps in particular, eating the many treats during iftar. That means we have to love this same opportunity for our Muslim brothers and sisters. So if you enjoy iftar in Ramadan, if that is something that you love, then you by necessity have to also love this for your brothers and sisters. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said as it comes in Sayyid Bukhari and Muslim, none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother that which he loves for himself. And so we spoke about in detail about giving charity in the last class. So I remind you and I and I humbly request you to please support the Ramadan Iftar Food Project with your financial support, with your dua. And even after you leave this class, you can reach out to your social circles, your family, your friends, your neighbors, and encourage them to also donate. The website is rhicharity.com Relieve Humanity International is the organization so rhicharity.com We should recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of his people with or without us with or without us Allah is the one who is responsible for everyone Allah provides the risk the question for us to ask ourselves is how many of us will take this opportunity to financially support the needy, to benefit from it. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for us to help them. They will get what, what Allah has decreed for them no matter what, whether we donate or not. The choice we have to make for ourselves is do we want to do goodness to try and rewind, rewind our sins? I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to fulfill our responsibilities and the rights that we owe to others. I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy and forgive us and all of those that have passed. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of our worship and make us from amongst those that benefit from this blessed month of Ramadan. 
I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to improve our lives by seeking his forgiveness and to make us to strive to do good and to strive to refrain from evil. <clears throat> and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us attain taqwa during this blessed Ramadan and to let us benefit from it for the rest of our lives. I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who reach and observe the month of Ramadan and bless it for us and make us amongst those that are accepted. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be amongst those who earn the pleasure of Allah by doing what he has commanded and by following the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa jazakumullahu khayran. Wa barakallahu fikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.